neighborhood and of its people who did not want to go. I do not have no money. I want my home. The old man is old. The old man is old. No more. That's enough. I don't want to get out. I accept my two daughters. They don't want to get out because they spend a lot of money. Plenty of money they spend in this place. We not get money for nobody. Never. Hi. Welcome to the West End Video Newsletter. Tonight's show is going to be about the West End Museum. Now the Western Museum, uh, we've had it for about two years and we're still in the fundraising phase of it. We open two days a week from 12 to 4 just to have some people if you want to come in and take a look around. But we're sort of a work in progress and uh, we intend to, you know, uh, we have money coming. We're, we're, we're in, in the middle of a couple different fundraisers. Uh, tonight I have with me two of the board members. There's Joseph Peterkin and Arthur Vendetti. Uh, oh. Uh, I guess, Joe, do uh, you have anything to say about the West End Museum? Well, I guess we hope we're going to get this on the road finally. It's been mm -hmm. a long time coming, and we want to get this thing going. Uh, the museum is going to be representative of the area and of what was done down there, unfortunately. Right. Uh, we see this happening again. This is not a old tradition. You're talking about eminent, tradition. Eminent. We did the same thing to the Native Americans when they were here. You're talking about them out domain. the same way. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, uh, the memorial to the West End, but also the wonderful people who lived there. That's right. They came all from different unique backgrounds and contributed to a melting pot that was, well, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Art has been very involved in the museum so far. Yeah. Um, well, I'd like to ask you a question. Let me interview you. Okay. <laughs> How long have you been doing this show? I've been doing this show about 20 years. Uh, yeah, 20 years. Well, I think it's time. about 18 or 19. I, I don't, I'd have to go back and really count the years, but we've been doing it a long time. Matter of fact, even one show we did, uh, Joe, our producer, and yeah. I were out here, and we did a show just about doing the show. And, yeah. oh, and one year, when I turned 60, uh, we had, I don't know if you were here or not, but we had, there was me, uh, I know Mousy was here, and we had a yeah. couple other people, we had a my 60th birthday yeah. on, on the West End video right. newsletter. It's, yeah. it's been a long time. 60? Well, that was five years ago. <laughs> no, we had, the, uh, we had a cake. We had yeah, a cake. Right. We were all on the yeah, show. That's right. Well, not all, but yeah. there's about four, four yeah. of us yeah, we had, we, we, on we, the we, show. Yeah. But I, I'd like you folks to, uh, I'd, I'd just like to say something about Jimmy. I'd like to commend Jimmy on his dedication to the West End. Of course, this is... Yeah. Uh, but all it's gonna, you you know, it's don't gonna get paid for this or anything, and it's all his dedication. You sound like, like my wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, he deserves an applause for oh. all the years he's Thank been doing this. Good luck. Good luck. And Thank uh, you. Good luck. He, uh, he and I, we grew up on the same street. And That's we lived right. on the same right. street, Poplar street, on Poplar That's Street. Right. And uh, like I said before, Bruno did too. Is, we this is all pro bono for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all pro bono for yeah, all of us. All of us, actually, yeah, but he's... It's just that I've been doing it a little longer. Yeah, he's dedicated an awful lot of time, and he deserves the... Uh, and even the newsletter. The newsletter really that's, is... That's, that's, it's, that's we're taking about 14000 a year, and it just about evens out at the end of the year. Yeah, it pays the bills. Yeah, it just the, the, there's not a lot of money. In there. I wish there was. I wouldn't yeah, mind taking the salary. <laughs> we all do. But uh, uh, what we're doing now, yeah. um, in regards to the museum, we're having a uh, fundraiser. That's right. And, uh, of course, we're a nonprofit and organization. And uh, we have some information here on the fundraiser. Yeah, we're having sort of a, uh, I guess Joe, you, if you I don't want to shoot this. I, don't, I, I wouldn't want to call it a lottery. Uh, no, it's not a lottery. It's, it's a, a fundraiser yeah, because fundraiser. Uh, whatever funds we, uh, we, uh, we make from this, uh, we put towards our rent, towards our condo That's fee. Right. We have, we have, certain, we have right. certain overhead that we have to meet. Yeah. I guess it runs about 1500 a month. Well, with and, heat and yeah, everything. Sure. Yeah, it runs about 1500 a so month. So we have to raise that kind of money. Yeah, and uh, that's what we're doing. And uh, yeah. we have a few things going. We've done a few, uh, I guess, we've had a few events. Yeah, functions. The functions, functions to raise right. money. And, uh, yeah. and also in, uh, in the uh, newsletter, uh, We've asked for donations, and of course yeah, we've we, put the uh, names of the people that donated. Yeah, we've gotten so far. We've, we've done well. well. Well, we've gotten well. You know. Yeah. We've, we've paid our bills. Yeah, we've gotten about uh, I guess around twenty thousand, if I figure it out. No, it's more than that. Frank Privateer just donated oh, yeah. another five. So, 
Uh, it's probably, we're, we're probably taking in through the newsletter maybe about 25,000. Yeah. We had 25,000 when we started. I mean, which isn't a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean. It isn't. You no, gotta, when you can yeah. set a 1,500 a month just for rent. <laughs> rent so yeah, doesn't realize. go far. We, we oh. do a lot of sweat equity. Uh, yeah. The board members uh, come down. We, we the museum. Yeah, exactly. We, right, do things. Clients just help us yeah. out tremendously. Mr. Yeah. Primatera, right. uh, if it wasn't him, we wouldn't be. Yeah. Well, we, we would, to, but it would be a little more difficult. It would be difficult. Right. He has revealed yeah. himself so many yeah. times. It's more than just a museum. It's going to be a community center representative of the people who were there. That's right. Giving back to what we got. It's, people, uh, people from the West. It's going to be an active, in. ongoing museum, mm -hmm. ongoing, and it'll be have different uh, exhibits in there. Uh, we have a complete history of the West End. We have many videos to show. We have many pictures of the local groups, the street corner right. groups, the clubs. Uh, if they want to get together, they have a place to come to, and we can set up a program for them with their memorabilia right. and. Uh, our remembrances of their families. And their families also, yes. of course. And of course, it'll be a local community center uh, mm -hmm. contributing to the welfare. Well, we have city. a lot of people coming in now that, uh, that live in the area that stop in, like on Tuesdays and Fridays, that uh, used to live in the West End and come in and talk to us. Uh, right. That uh, yeah. The guy from the hill that brought that picture in. Right. Right. Uh, there's a, there's a, there's a, a whole woman comes in from New Jersey. Yeah. She wants to see this museum. <laughs> she said, I can't well. wait for this. So we've got to get going on this. Yeah, well, we, uh, we we're gonna, it, it's, it's a going thing, and we're going to yeah. do it. It's working. We'll get there. Yeah. yeah. I may not be alive when it finally gets functional, but it, you know, we'll it, it'll get going now. sooner it'll or later. Be there. Because there is, you know, there's a lot of interest in the West End, not just in former West Enders. A lot of the, a lot of the colleges uh, yeah. are interested in it. It's You'd be amazing. surprised how many people. students. Well, you do a talk at MIT, don't every, you? Yeah. Maybe you can yeah. explain. You know. Well, every every year I go to MIT. Uh, Dennis Frenchman, who teaches uh, master's students in urban planning, uh, I, I'm the resident dinosaur from the West End. I go there and explain. As a matter of fact, I have a, a, a video of a, of a documentary done in 1962 called Lost Neighborhood, and where they they went to the West End and they and just after they started tearing down and, and interviewed people yeah. and everything. It's very interesting because it shows both sides of what, what Boston thought, and, and they were fairly arrogant. There's a there's a <laughs> banker that says, "Oh, this is a municipal hysterectomy." <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think we and have that gasps. film. At, yeah, we, we have, have that at the down museum, there. don't yeah. we? Yeah. 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 It's called Lost Neighborhood. It was uh, ABC you know. did it. And, and I, I, I answer their questions, and a lot of people don't realize. Yeah. For years, people didn't realize that eminent domain, how insidious it was, till they started doing it everywhere else, and people started, yeah. getting, and started getting hit. Matter of fact, right now, I just pulled out of the paper yesterday, in Florida, they're going to take 6,000 houses to, in this town and virtually destroy the town uh, for eminent domain. I forgot exactly what they were going to put there, but it was for big business, for right? Private, yeah, private, 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 private. Basically, basically wiping out a small town in Florida yeah. because, uh, you know, the yeah. mayor wants to make, uh, have a yeah. Higher tax base, and they can do it now because the, uh, the Supreme Court. Uh, well, that's being oh, challenged yeah. now, isn't it? And no, Supreme Court. It. What happened is the Supreme Court ruled on it. It's law. They can't do anything. But what can happen is on the local level. Okay, like we can change the, uh, like say the city or the state can pass laws that can uh, alleviate the effects of it. In other words, it can only be done, you can pass laws saying it can only be done in such a way or such a, you know, or it can't be done for this or can't be done for that, you know what I mean? There's, mm -hmm. there's, the, uh, the local communities and the states have the right to impose, you know, whatever restrictions. But if they, they, they want to just do it whenever they want, right, the Supreme Court says it's all right. But there is a movement on the local level yeah, exactly. across the country. Across the country. To, uh, yeah, to, uh, to, I belong to a group called the Institute for Justice. They, they called me up about, I guess it was about four years ago. I went down to Washington, D.C., yeah. yeah, and remember. I met a lot of the people down there. And, and you can't believe See, I always, th in, in Boston, it was pretty much for a long time because of the West End, uh, urban renewal and domain uh, was not a factor because nobody wanted to do it anymore. It mm -hmm. was just the West End became such a horror story. Yeah, I you know. know. They were supposed to do the South End afterwards, but they never, they never got around to it. If we had survived till 65 or 66 when the anti-war movement started, mm -hmm. uh, we w it would have never happened. 
But yeah. we were before that. We were there when people thought yeah, they could run all over yeah. you. Before the demonstrations and, mm -hmm. yes. and what have you. Mm -hmm. And, and the people well, in the West End were largely immigrants, and uh, yeah, they, just, they didn't fight authority. Yeah. They just well, fight it was, authority. we were stunned. We didn't believe it was mm -hmm. going to happen. People were stunned that this isn't going to happen. It was a sort of a, you know, it was a big 900-pound gorilla in the room, but nobody wanted to look at it. Basically, that's what happened. Yeah. Of course, there were some screwballs that threw yeah, them all oh, cocktails. <laughs> 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 we've, been, we've been approached by Whole Foods would open up the uh, took over Stop and Shop yeah. and sponsoring a walking tour of the West End of Boston. We are trying to get mm -hmm. it to now and we're going to have an historic tour of the city and at the end of it they will wind up at the museum to see the exhibit. Yeah. We'll be working developing that right now. Uh, a lot of things we want to get going on and services. And, yeah. and, uh, uh, in the next newsletter, it's at the, it's at the typesetter right now. Matter of fact, I'll, tomorrow I'll bring down a couple of the pictures because uh, I gave the pictures to the uh, to the typesetter, but I, I ran them into the computer. I have a, a picture of the Hendrix Club. Oh, you know, uh, you, you know, I never realized where the Hendrix Club was. Do you remember where McManus? I assume it was on the corner of. You remember where McManus? No, right across from Green Street. Yeah, that building right across yeah, from Green only, Street. Yeah. And I never realized that. I always thought it was on Cambridge Street for some well, it reason. Don't ask me and why. Maybe moved over there. That's and probably what happened. I yeah. think because originally it was on the corner. And I have a picture of the beach. Somebody sent me in a picture of the uh, Western beach. beach. Oh, by the Longfellow Bridge. 1939. Yeah. 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 Across you know, from the jail. I showed. I showed. <laughs> <laughs> I showed. Show, and it was you know fr from the uh, from the bridge looking down right. Now yeah. you can see in the back the Leachman. Yeah. Oh. bridge going across. Yeah. I showed my typesetter and she goes, Revere Beach? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. no. Uh, on the back, I, I guess maybe uh, it's a Charles Bank Beach. Now, I don't know if that was the official name or, or yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was in the Charles well, Bank. Uh, Charles Bank, I guess you'd beach right. 19, consider anything right. along the shore of the Charles. Yeah. Right. 39, 19, 19, that's 19. the year I was, uh, well, I don't want to go into that. <laughs> You're 40, right? <laughs> 40, yeah. But yeah, a, yeah. Anyways, we, ha we have a lot of interesting memorabilia. We have. Uh, uh, the banner, the standard that the uh, St. Mary's Church had. Now, see, a lot of people don't realize that St. Mary's Polish Church in the West End, you know, everybody hap happens to think the West End, if you talk to some people, they think the West End is just Italian, or it's just Italian, which was yeah. largely at the end, but it had gone through so many incarnations, right? It started yeah. off largely, uh, almost completely Irish, then uh, it became largely yeah. Jewish and sure. largely Italian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. I remember there were a lot of uh, Ukrainians. Yeah. And, uh, well, at the end of World War yeah. II, we, we, in '58, we were getting the people. What well, they used to come from those right. those camps, right? right? They were displaced camps. Mm -hmm. We, right? we, we, we were hearing people. a lot about what happened over there that was wasn't being published. Yeah. And we it heard may have, people came in. From it may have been a whole different wave of people. It may have ended up all Ukrainian or something. You know, right. you, know you don't. Well, you can't tell because yeah. that's you know the way the neighborhood would be. What I'd like to say, if, if it's uh, sure. appropriate. Now, if there's anyone in the viewing audience that's experienced in setting up museums, yeah. we would appreciate your input yeah. on that. Right. Uh, yeah, well, uh, but if, if you are ex if you're not experienced, well, <laughs> then you, you're with us. <laughs> but uh, if you are an experienced person, please call us. Call the museum. It's funny any, because we have any help we could use. Yeah. Archivists, people yeah. who went to photography. Yeah, uh, archivists. That's that's another thing. We, we have so many different uh, yeah. disciplines we need to get this thing running right. At what the museum. what would Ag really uh, set us up? Okay, and that's just a case of money. We have we have 70 hours of oral history tapings that we did mm -hmm. of, of people. A lot of them have died. We started. We did that in the late 80s, and a lot of those people have died. We had. Uh, uh, what was her name? Catherine Madigan. Uh, she was came from, uh, I think it was around Chadden Street, and she was talking about the red schoolhouse that was on uh, Chadden Street that they, she went to when she was a kid, or wooden schoolhouse. I don't know. And uh, you know, that she she was uh, she was 90 when that when she was oh, talking wow. about that right yeah. now. <laughs> Civil War stuff. And so yeah. she was, you know, she was she was talking about. Yeah. And then we had another guy. Uh, his name was Small. He was 92. So we did a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we got a lot of uh, different people through. Sure. Through all the, it's it's we have quite a few Jewish people now. This is strange because if you go to most Jewish people and you say, "Look, we got to have an all of history taping," would you like to come down? Boom, 
They make time That's for right. it. Sure they do. Italians and the Irish, most of them, right, is, well, I don't know if I have the time. And, and that's not knocking them. I'm just telling you, that's the difference in, really? in the heritage, you know, yeah. how, they, how people look at their heritage, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I have the time. I don't know if I can get there. And we have about 75 hours, and we talk about everything from politics yeah. oh, that, to... That, that tape with... Uh, Judge Leary, Russo, and Mrs. Oh, yeah. Jackman. That was another one. That's yeah. a, that is. That's another one. We have, on politics, we had oh, them talking politics. about old-time politics. Yeah, we've run it on the show a couple of times, too. Right? Yeah. We've gone into it. It's, it. There's a whole lot of stuff there. If we had about a half a million dollars, right? Yeah. And, uh, but those oral history tapings, we should put them on DVD, right? Sure. There is so much interesting stuff in there. Now, the oral history tapings, uh, the questions were done by Dave Robbins, who was the head of the history department at Suffolk. He mm -hmm. since became the, uh, the dean of Suffolk, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, of the liberal arts school, I think. I'm not entirely sure. So, But uh, I don't know if he's still there or not. But he wrote the questions for the uh, oral history taping. Yeah. And we did, a, we did a lot of, uh, yeah. like I say, 75 hours. And it's a lot yeah. of interesting stuff. Really we, can, we can use help from people that know computers in regards to burning from tape to DVD, yeah. you know, uh, so if, if there is anyone in our viewing audience here that mm -hmm. knows that, that's my, experience in that, uh, we can use your help too. Like you I know? say, we were talking about this earlier, my problem is that I know how to edit DVD, yeah. I, I'm not DVD, uh, I went through all the courses, uh, when we first started the yeah. show I used to do all my own editing and, and, and everything. Mm -hmm. This DVD stuff, I don't have a clue. Yeah, perhaps, I don't have a clue. Know, perhaps someone out there would really appreciate your help. Well, like I say, if we, uh, uh, it's probably not that hard to, if, if we just, you know, if you don't have to edit something, if we just take the yeah. tapes and, 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 and transfer, and transfer them onto DVD, it may not be that hard. Uh, I think. Well, I don't know how. I, I guess. It, yeah. These, See, at this problem, at this, yeah, this, at this point, the problem is that we just have so many things to do. If we could just concentrate on one thing, on one thing exactly. okay, we yeah. could have a gem. We could have a series of gems. But yeah. What the problem is is that you know we're we're so tied up with so many different things. Yeah. There's so many aspects of it. Kind of and actually, the fundraising is overriding and everything. That's our big thing right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've without got, that, we've got we that. won't be a museum. That's right. Um, so if there's somebody out there with a lot of money, yeah. uh, has, has a history in the West End and would like, would like yeah. to uh, see the yes. scope, we'll be yeah. willing to take your money. <laughs> Jimmy, do you have any phone numbers, Joe? Do you have any that they can call the museum number? Do you have that? Right yeah. here, it's 617-723-7243. Uh, and this will have updated analysis when you call if yeah. you draw uh, if you buy a chance on this the na winner's name will be on there that's right uh, yeah. also if you at that I think we mentioned it but if you're at this drawing which will be held the first and 29th on a Sunday afternoon at 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. there's a door prize of $200 I think you already mentioned that Arthur if yeah. nobody's present the $50 be added then well, be I, have, I have a little fly here and Go it's ahead. the West End Museum fundraiser the 1500 Club, $60 a year, $60 a year gets you a chance at winning 1500 four times. Four separate drawings, each worth 1500 and a host of lesser prizes. First drawing, 1 p.m., January 29, 2006. Winners will be notified by mail, or you can attend the drawing at the museum and have a chance at a $200 door prize. You must be present to win the door prize. That's mm -hmm. essential. And if you, nobody wins the door prize at the first drawing, it goes up $50 incrementally every time. So that's, and yeah. that's a six, if you want any information on that, it's 617-723-2125. And we, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. What, what we have is uh, uh, we send you out uh, uh, an envelope with uh, a ticket and, and uh, a That's form right. that you fill out and you send back. That will be put into the drawing and uh, whoever, and that $60 is four times a year, okay? Yeah. And there's, a, there's what, a $200, yeah. $300 second prize? 300 300 and four yeah. prizes of 50 yeah. yeah, that's every time. That's every time. Every, four times, $1,500, odds, $300, 50 50 50 right? The odds are uh, fantastic. And about yeah. 300 tickets sold, that's going to give us some good Better money. Better odds than Las Vegas, oh. really. But, yeah. I mean, 
Oh yeah, four mm -hmm. chances to win uh, seven prizes. It comes down to fifteen dollars. Right. Fifteen dollars yeah, a shot. Money. It's, yeah. it's five dollars a month. Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, it's $5 a lot a less month. expensive than buying lottery tickets. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a great it's a great thing. It's, yeah, it's, if it's you not, can't buy it for the year, if the first drawing is going to buy, you can buy it for the remainder of the year. Be forty five dollars, yeah. thirty dollars, and yeah, fifteen dollars. Yeah, it's prorated. You know. Prorated, but uh, and uh, and it's going to a good cause. It's not cause. going to the state. That's which right. We know where that goes, <laughs> but uh, but it's going to a good cause, yeah, something right. tangible that you can see where the money is going, and uh, obviously the state lottery. You don't know where that money's going. It can go anywhere in the it's, pockets and whatever. It's yeah. going to be a place where you can use. You can come down and visit. You yeah. can be able to take your children down here, show them your heritage. And, yeah, it's uh, really a nice facility, actually. And it's, it's a great be, facility. Plenty of room. It's a great, it's a nice facility. Great facility. Yeah. And a great facility. Great community yeah. center. An active community center, and it's going to be open hopefully seven days a week. Well, yeah, well, we'll see what happens. But the problem is, a, the problem is, is to, to be open seven days a week, we have we need somebody that's uh, to be there. We need people there. Well, it's not just that. We can we we can, we can put we we had an executive director at one time. Okay, that's when we were having money coming in from the uh, the developers because mm. I got so many things going. I I can't focus wow. on one thing totally. But if you have somebody that's running the place, right, they go to the mm -hmm. politicians, they go to all these meetings, they do everything, yeah. and, and it becomes a yeah. whole different story. Well, their experience in fundraising. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, and and yeah. they know people, they, there's right. people they know that right. uh, could help us. Right. So anyway, it'll be a long and uh, uh, Torturous journey, but I'm sure we'll get there. Yeah, we're gonna get there. We're gonna we'll get there. there. We don't give up easy. That's it's, one thing it's about going, Western it's people. Going, it's going now. It's, we're not stopping. One thing about Western people, we don't give up easy. No, we're no. Gonna, well, it's been happened. since 1960, and we're yeah. still here. Yeah. Thanks yeah. to Jim, well, I, uh, we're still uh, intact. Uh, I don't want to say from 19. See, see, the strange thing is how this all started. We had a function out at Camp Gannett. As a matter of fact, they had a, a function at Camp Gannett and uh, in Sharon. Which is a camp there from the Elizabeth yeah. Beatty House when it was in the, when the West End, and uh, somebody ran it. And I wasn't here for it, right? When I came back, they said, well, you know, I went to California, and I said, well, I said, why don't we have it again? Oh, I don't know. I don't feel like running it. So I called up as many people as I knew, right? We had a, it was fifteen dollars a car. I supplied the food, everything, mm -hmm. and Johnny Rosado went around and he took everybody's name, mm -hmm. you know, wrote them into the book and address. So I was thinking, I said, next time, instead of calling everybody up, right, I'll send out, I sent out one side sheet. I remember those, those white. Yeah, white. Those white yeah, yeah many grab And Raymond, Raymond, look, at, uh, Raymond was the guy that, if Raymond, he was working at the uh, uh, printing place, and he did it for us for Zip. Yeah. Okay, it was, so that was his, and, and we sent it out. We had 125 people. Next thing I know, we had 250, then we had yeah, 500. Sure. It just kept growing and growing. Oh, yeah. I mean, nobody realized, everybody thought their crowd was the only crowd that was still hanging together from the West End. Yeah. There was no way to connect them. It there was Sonny right. Lepresti's crowd, you know, you guys, yeah, you know, the a whole host of crowd. different little things that everybody was still hanging yeah. out together and doing everything, but they thought, everybody thought that they were the only ones that were doing that, right? Mm -hmm. And then when the newsletter did it, it connected all the dots, mm -hmm. and everybody just started. Uh, Where does it go now? It goes as far as Australia? Yeah, we have somebody in Australia. Her name is Europe. Hayward. Uh, yeah, uh, Hawaii. Switzerland. Switzerland. Hawaii. Switzerland. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of the. Uh, oh, Jane Jacobs. I don't know if you guys know who Jane Jacobs is. Jane Jacobs wrote a book called uh, The Death and Life of Great American Cities. She's a sociologist. She wrote the sociologist book. And uh, she's considered the guru of development in this. Mm. You know, now she lives in Toronto now, but she's, mm -hmm. she's uh, very well known. I mean, yeah. she's. Uh, uh, I seen her at they were they were having a thing for her. I went up to her. I said, you know, I said, you know, I, I send you the newsletter. I, I said, I hope you get. She said, yeah, I get it. I read it every I read it every every time. She says, uh, but she says maybe I'll write something for you. I said it would be an honor if you would. And she never did. But she never did. Well, at least <laughs> she she, offered. Yeah. Right. And we have Herb Gans who wrote the uh, yeah the urban, urban villages. villages. Yeah. yeah. And. Uh, who else? We have a, up in Toronto, uh, not Toronto, uh, there is a Toronto. Uh, we have a, a retired professor, uh, Manny Linden, and he, uh, he, I guess he was a professor in, in Canada somewhere, but he was originally from Glasgow, Scotland. And what he said, he keeps sending me things. Every so often it's in the paper, right? It was a place called the Goebbels. 
Mm -hmm. And they tore it down, right? And they put up these high rises like eminent domain. Mm -hmm. He said the same thing, eminent domain. Really? He says in 1990, nobody wanted to live this, so they tore down the high rises and put up put up a replica. Of the old time. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. Waste the money. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's you know, that's yeah, way people know. Yeah, things. Yeah. Everybody has a good idea. You know, a, yeah. a lot of these people are what I call what if. You know, what if we do this? It'll be beautiful, right? Next yeah. thing you know, it's not beautiful. I, there's a lot of those people. You know. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like in the uh, 60s, 70s, and part of the 80s, well, not in the 80s, I guess 60s and 70s, most of the urban people went out to suburbia. Yeah, that was considered the life. And now they're coming yeah. back and they can't afford that. Well, you know, see what happens what, is... What's happening with Boston is a shame. It's going to be pretty soon. It's going to be a mushroom farm. They build any more tall buildings out there. There are, there are no neighborhoods picture, anymore. You take a picture of Skyline of Paris, London, all these big cities. They have their high-rise mm -hmm. sections and they have their residential sections. That's not happening in Boston. There are no neighborhoods in Boston anymore. Charlestown is virtually gone. Mm -hmm. The North End, the last figures I got, that was it was like 18% of what we consider Italian. That's may, what I got. Yeah, there may be yeah. different Italians exactly. there now, but uh, yeah. the Italians, you know, the you know, yeah. working class yeah. Italians, there's only about 18%. Yeah, of them I go in there every weekend, so mm -hmm. I, I still know people in there because I work there. Southie yeah. is changing. Yeah. Southie is changing at a phenomenal it pace. Oh, it it's a phenomenal pace. It's yeah. changing all over. Uh, uh, who knows who you know yeah. uh, what it's going to be in two or three yeah. years. Right. Right. You ever hear of Fort Hill? Fort Hill's in Roxbury. Uh, oh. Yes, yes. Fort okay. Hill's in Roxbury, okay. and uh, that was you know all black at one point. Sure. And now if you you you're black, you got to have a lot of money to yeah, live there. If you don't exactly. have a lot of money, to live there. Yeah. and it's yeah. the same. When's the last time you were down Mass Ave? Oh, I know. I go. I, I've that used to be all yeah. black. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it being all black, but that used to be all black, right? Yeah. Now you go down there, it's predominantly white. Yeah, well, there's a lot of old brownstones in that area right, right. that now they're renovating and mm -hmm. you can't touch the prices. Yeah, can't afford them. Can't touch them. South Dent's two and a half million, million dollars for, uh, for, for, for you know what you call it, four-story sure. tenement that used to be there. Remember the old Union Park down there? Oh, that's forget about Union Park Street. That made yeah. that made Lewisburg Square look the class. That was a real beautiful building. A big build. Yeah. I went to school down there. You know who had I a place down there? Stanley Freeman's right. mother had a place down there. Yeah. And uh, she used to, she rented it. She had like a boarding house down there in in that park, you know, with the fountain and mm -hmm. yeah, in the middle. Beautiful. It yeah. Still and that, but that was a long yeah. time ago when. And uh, the inside. <laughs> <those homes. Have> <laughs> when it was cons there? when it wasn't considered, yeah. you know. There was as good as Beacon anything up in Beacon Hill inside. There yeah. Well, a friend of mine things. had a home there. He, he grew up there. His, his uh, family grew up there, and it's Union Park Street by Albany Street, maybe a block right. from mm -hmm. Albany Street, and uh, the city at the time sold the building to him for a dollar because he mm -hmm. lived there so long. And this was before yeah. he became famous and uh, he renovated it and this and that and he sold it for about a million and a half. Oh yeah, yeah. No it's, it's, it's no totally problem. different now. Well, we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, do you guys have anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, about? what I'd like to say again about our uh, fundraiser, if you can hold, uh, please. This uh, is this the camera right here? Talk about the one that's lit. Mm -hmm. Like this. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, a way of helping us in a small way to keep mm -hmm. a, a consistent supply of funding in coming into us, which we need. Our, like our fees are expensive, uh, maintaining it, keeping it clean, and, uh, and of course we have to staff it. A lot That's of right. volunteers, but we do need some source of income other than what we have been getting. And this and will like be a great chance to, uh, in great odds, to win some money and help us out at the same time. We yeah, really it, appreciate it. I, it it's it's sort of sure, Just call us up with this number and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be glad to get back to you. It's it's symbiotic, okay, in the sense that uh, you'll be doing something for us and if you win, we'll be doing something sure. for you. Top prize is right. $1,500. Yeah. I'd like to say Merry Christmas and have a great safe holiday. Yes. Yeah. For viewing people. Don't forget that we, we could use whatever help we can get. I guess we're sort of begging here, but that's, I don't mind. <laughs> Okay, see you at the next West End Video Newsletter. Okay, take care.